Hey everybody, welcome to the videos where I'm breaking down my final picks for week 14 of the NFL season over on DraftKings, the more finalized and polished version of the first look we do earlier in the week. Then we'll do lineup building and core plays tomorrow if you do want to check those out. But this is a pretty interesting week, lots of news and COVID designations to sift through, but we're trying to figure it out at the end here. But if you do find this video helpful in any way possible, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet already. If you want to take that one step further, an official member over on Patreon. Link is down below in the description for that. Optimizers, ownership projections, cheat sheets, everything that you probably need is on there. So if you want to check it out, link can be found down below. And last but not least, this video is sponsored by Prize Picks. I'm sure most of you know it is by now, but if you don't, it's Daily Fantasy Sports Simplified. Just you versus the projections. There's no sharks, 150 max contests, or salary cap restrictions, or anything like that. Just you versus the props they offer each and every single day. And as of right now, if you new study over on Price Place, you can get a free money bonus. This is the positive matchup to a hundred dollars. Use code CPEN and tell them I sent you. But I think it'll be up for the plugs for the most part. So without further ado, let's dive into today's video. And as always, we'll start with the quarterback position and kind of deep compared to most weeks. Typically, I've been having like three to four quarterbacks visit here, but I feel like there's many directions we can go. That's kind of the case at a lot of positions this weekend, where I don't really think there's a bunch of smash plays or just a bunch of okay and good plays so ownership i'm expecting to be a little bit spread out this weekend compared to most weeks at least the past few weeks where we've had just major 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 chalk but whether you want to spend up go right in the middle or down low i think we have plenty of options here we'll start up top with josh allen and tom brady both these guys play in the same game 53 and a half point over under and only a three point spread i'm not sure exactly how popular this game will be just because of how expensive everyone is but if salary wasn't an issue, this is the game of the week here. I mean, lots of good fantasy options here. Just from the Bills, you have Allen, Stephon Diggs, Dawson Knox, Emmanuel Sanders, Cole Beasley for the Buccaneers. You got your usual suspects of Tom Brady, Leonard Fournette, Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, Rob Gronkowski. So this should be a fun game. Also, in that 4.25 p.m. time slot, which we all love the late night hammers. So it really just depends on which kind of stacks you're looking at. If you want to use the Bills pass catching options more than the Buccaneers, go with Josh Allen. If you want Tom Brady and the Bucks, go with Tom Brady. But these guys are really interchangeable for me. I would say Josh Allen's probably safer than Tom Brady just because he has that built-in rushing floor on the season, averaging close to 40 rushing yards per game, which is kind of like a built-in passing touchdown. But both guys have been excellent this year, but Tom Brady's just been kind of on a whole other level. I mean, 315 passing yards per game, close to three passing touchdowns, or also throwing the ball around 40 times per game, but I like both. If you're looking at the matchup for Tom Brady, the Bills have obviously been stout, but their numbers are going to be skewed for the rest of the season now because, you know, last week the Patriots threw the ball three times, and I forget how many passing yards they had, but now the Bills are averaging at least 175 passing yards per game allowed, which it's obviously skewed. They have been a good defense, but the loss of Tredavious White does help the passing game for the Buccaneers and does limit the Bills' passing defense. So, all in all, I think Tom Brady or Josh Allen, fantastic plays. The Buccaneers secondary, obviously, that's the weak point. The Bucs are good versus the run, but they do kind of suck versus the pass, so it's another boost for Josh Allen. But both guys are fine. Love them both in tournaments. If you can get there in cash games, I don't mind it, but I feel like I'm probably going to spend down a little bit in cash games this weekend. Justin Herbert, $7,100. I'm not sure exactly. I'm having a hard time kind of pegging his ownership because it really depends on what kind of pass catching options he's left with. They still have a 26.5 ply in the team total, but if Mike Williams happened to be out and Keenan Allen, that's definitely a big downgrade for Justin Herbert, and it really kills the stacks. I mean, yeah, we can go Justin Herbert and Jalen Guyton, but at that point, I probably just want to play Jalen Guyton and just get my cheap points there. So it really just depends on injury news, or I guess COVID news, for Justin Herbert. But it's a great spot for us, the Giants, but as of right now, we're just going to wait in the news. Going to go too in-depth there in case these guys happen to be out, which I'm not probably going to be interested in Justin Herbert, but I really will like Jalen Guyton that point just because he's going to have to get targets. Dak Prescott, 6700 bucks, like the spot here versus Washington. Wish he was playing at home, but Washington has not been good versus quarterbacks this year, allowing the most points for getting the position in their 30th DVA. And the great thing about Dak is it's always easy to stack him up with his pass catching options. None of his pass catching options are like eight some thousand dollars. Like when we roster Patrick Mahomes, it's hard to stack with him because his pass catching options are insanely expensive. But the great thing about Dak is that's just not really the case, and Dak typically is kind of cheap, too. Like, he's only $6,700 in the best matchup you can ask for for a quarterback, so definitely don't mind Dak this weekend. Uh, Taysom Hill, just kind of looking at all these cheap guys. We have Taysom Hill, Taylor Heineke, and Cam Newton. Taysom Hill, by far, is my favorite here, and he's actually the leading candidate for me in cash games this weekend. Alvin Kamara is back, which maybe that takes away some carries if they just want to get him more involved than they did with Mark Ingram, but this is a great matchup versus the Jets, and if he's going to get me 10-plus carries versus the Jets, I mean, he should be able to do some damage on the ground because their defense versus the run this year has been absolutely awful. And Taysom Hill dealing with the injury with his hand, I don't think he's going to be throwing the ball a ton. I mean, I assume he's going to throw the ball, obviously, but 
you should probably rely on running the ball a little bit more, and you can definitely do that here versus this Jets defense. I feel like he's a very safe option here. Tyler Heineke is more of a tournament option. I do like this Washington-Dallas game quite a bit. 47.5 point over under, which was a little bit higher, but I think with all these guys priced kind of low for the most part, I think like CeeDee Lamb's probably the most expensive player in this game. It's kind of easy to stack this up, and I could definitely see it being a little high scoring, so I don't mind Taylor Heineke in tournaments. And then Cam Newton, if you could stomach it, we all played him a few weeks ago. Once he was like 50% owning cash games, he got off to a hot start. Didn't end in a hot start. It looked absolutely awful. P.J. Walker ended up getting into the game, but he is facing Atlanta. They are 30th DBA versus the pass this season, or I mean 30th in fantasy points a lot per game with the quarterback position in 29th DBA. Either way, it's not been good this year. And he offers you that rushing upside. It's just, I mean, it's it's just it feels gross rostering Cam Newton because he looked absolutely awful in that last game. And moving on to the running back position, unlike last week, I don't think it's as deep. Obviously, last week we had like. 40 good running back plays. It's just insane. It's probably the best running back slate I have ever seen, to be honest. This week, I mean, it's not awful, but it is kind of rough here. We'll start at the top with Austin Eckler, 8300 bucks. If Keenan Allen, Mike Williams happen to be out, I mean, obviously a big boost for Austin Eckler because he's a big proponent of the passing game, even if all these guys play. I mean, I think we can still play Austin Eckler. He's been a touchdown scoring machine this season. He's heavily involved with the passing game. I mean, it's Austin Eckler, one of the best fantasy running backs this season, 26.5 implied team total, playing a home 10-point favorite. And on the season, averaging close to six targets per game, 15.5% target share, 12 to 13 carries per game. And the Giants are 31st DB versus the run in 24th versus running backs. Also along six catches and nearly 50 receiving yards per game to the position. But like I said, he does get a big boost if Keenan Allen happened to be out. So we have to keep our eyes and ears open and peeled for some news on that throughout the week. Which I guess it's Friday, so hopefully within the next two days, which we should have some news on that. Alvin Kamara is back. No Mark Ingram this weekend, so I would expect a pretty heavy workload for Alvin Kamara because if they're going to try to get Ty Montgomery and Tony Jones touches, this is not going to be optimal for the Orleans Saints here. And it's a great matchup versus the Jets. You know how bad they've been versus the run this year. I already mentioned that with Taysom Hill, which we'll have the numbers in front of you. They're allowing the most points per game in their 30th DVOA, and they're getting killed through the passing game. If Taysom Hill uses his running backs in the passing game like Alvin Kamara, which you know last year we saw some scenarios where he didn't use Alvin Kamara, then we saw scenarios where he did, so going to be a bit hit or miss here. We have not yet seen that this season because they have not played together, but the Jets are just getting absolutely killed versus running backs this year. I will say Taysom Hill starting probably hurts his touching upside because he can always steal a rushing touchdown, but I think Kamara is still a fine play. Leonard Fournette, 7400 bucks. He's been an absolute fire, and he's been heavily, heavily used in the passing game. We can just not ignore that here. As he has 16 targets the past two weeks and so no less than five, and I think the past five weeks, and he's heavily used on the ground as well. Like He's just getting... Amazing usage, and he's in one of the best offenses, if not the best offensive football this year. I Buffalo again. I mean, it's not the greatest matchup versus their defense, but I always take talent or situation over matchups, and that's simply what I'm going to be doing here. The Bills are six DVA and allowing the six fewest points behind the running backs, but I don't care. I mean, the Bucks are going to be in scoring position. They have a 28.25 implied team total, 53 and a half point over under. I think Fortnite is playable in all formats this weekend. It's grayed out quite nicely for me. And then moving on to some of the cheap running backs, these guys do depend on injury news, although I still think they're playable if their counterparts happen to play. But Antonio Gibson, $6,000. I'm currently projecting him and Austin Eckler to be the two highest on running backs on the entire slate. J.D. McKissick did return to practice limited yesterday. Even if he does play, though, we can play Gibson. He's been getting elite usage even when McKissick played the past few weeks. And obviously McKissick was out last week, and Antonio Gibson once again dominated the touches. But don't forget in that game versus Seattle, McKissick did get hurt, but he got hurt very late in the game, and Gibson was still getting a ton of touches and still had several targets in that game. So even if McKissick does play, maybe they work him back a little bit. I don't know. He's probably not going to get full usage anyway. So Gibson, I like him here versus Dallas. I wouldn't say they've been the most forgiving defense versus the run this year, allowing the third fewest points per game. But again, like I always say, I take talent situation over matchups every single day. And I mean, we should get 20 plus touches at $6,000. That's hard to find these days. So definitely like Gibson. He's a very talented running back. Javante Williams, 5900 bucks was amazing, amazing on Sunday night versus KC. It sounds like Melvin Gordon is trending in the right direction to play, which is obviously going to hurt Javante because I mean, we're probably not going to get 30-plus touches, but I still think he's playable. I'm not sure if they're going to give Melvin Gordon the, like, his complete job back that he had where they're just splitting snaps. I, I mean, if they're smart, they should give Javante like 60-70% of the snaps and just mix in Melvin Gordon when he's tired. But I'm not sure exactly that's what they're going to do. If Melvin Gordon happened to not play, I will say Williams is my favorite running back play on the entire slate. I mean, they're facing Detroit. What more do you want? They've been awful versus run this year. I mean, they're not as bad as the Jets, but they're pretty close to it, allowing the fourth most points per game to the position 
and 23rd DVA. We also know Javante is a fine pass catcher. I think he had nine targets in that game versus the, versus the Chiefs. I might be overselling that, but I have to double check. But he had a lot of targets in that game, and he had plenty of touches on the ground. So even if Gordon is back, I think he's a fine play. He still grades out well, but he won't grade out as well. I'm sure that makes sense to you. And Jamal Williams, 5500 bucks. DeAndre Swift has yet to practice as of Thursday evening, so I'm going to assume he is out. And if that's the case, Jamal Williams, while he was not exciting last Sunday versus the Vikings, he still had some pretty strong usage, close to 20 total touches. The one problem was only one target. They did get that other running back involved a little bit. So I'd like to see the targets ramp up. I know he's not as good of a pass catcher as DeAndre Swift, but I was assuming he'd get more targets than that because we saw early in the season where even the week prior where Jamal Williams is using the passing game. So we'll have to see if that was just a game plan thing. But I still like him here. If he's going to give me 15, 20 touches at 5,500 bucks, again, volume like that for a running back this cheap is hard to find. The matchup versus the Broncos, obviously not in love with it. We only have a 16-point implied team total for the Lions here and they're 10.5-point dogs on the road, but this could lead to more dump-offs to Jamal Williams. They are 2050 versus the run this year, but I mean, it's mainly a surprise thing for me with Jamal Williams. And as far as wide receivers go, I try to keep this as simple as possible because if you're playing tournaments, which I assume most of you are, I'm more of a cash game guy. I do play single entries, but if you're playing tournaments, you need to correlate your lineups best as possible. And these wide receivers kind of hinge on the game stacks you're using or the quarterbacks you are playing. So if you're using Mahomes, you need one of either Travis Kelsey or Tyree Kill, or even both if you can afford it. I mean, paying an arm and a leg for it, but you got to correlate Patrick Holmes with somebody. I mean, yeah, you could use like a Byron Pringle or Marcus Robinson, but more than likely that's not going to end up working out. If you're using a Bills or Tampa Bay stack, Stephon Diggs is viable as either a run back or as a pairing option with John Allen, C. Lamb, if you are using Dak Prescott, Amari Cooper in there as well. Because we did get news from Mike McCarthy that he does not expect Amari Cooper to be limited this week. He was limited last week on Thursday night. So assuming he's a full go, 1500 bucks does look pretty good versus Washington, who's been awful versus wide receivers this year. Terrible versus quarterbacks, and they're 28th versus wide receivers now, and 38th versus the pass. So I think both those guys are certainly in play. Chris Godwin. So the Bills run pretty much a zone defense, and Tredavis White, obviously, I think that's going to be a big boost for Mike Evans. But with Rashad Perriman and Mike Evans on the outside, Chris Godwin should want to eat up the middle of the field here. So I love Godwin. If you're playing Tom Brady, pair him up with Godwin. If you're stacking the Bills, run it back with Godwin. Either way, I think Chris Godwin's a fantastic play. He's not as cheap as he has been, but I think he's fairly priced at this point. Honestly, it could be a little bit more expensive, I think. Maybe closer to $7,500 to close to $8,000 because they just make it way too easy to stack Tom Brady. Like last week versus Atlanta, they have Tom Brady dirt cheap, Chris Godwin dirt cheap. Like I, was, I don't know, the pricing was kind of stupid. So it was even Gronk's been way too cheap. They kind of priced him up a little bit this weekend, but still feels a little bit too low in my opinion. Uh, Terry McLaurin, he's a very low-owned tournament play. He's not picking up much ownership at all. And if you use Taylor Heineke, the running back, as one of the Cowboys' options. I think it's a nice way to go in tournaments. Hunter Renfro, i call him more of a cash game one-off or either a run-back option with your Chiefs stacks because I'm not really looking to play Derek Carr this week. You can as a flyer. I just feel like there's better cheap options. I didn't have them listed on here, but Renfro's been very solid and very consistent. I mean, no Henry Ruggs, and obviously no Darren Waller helped last week as well, but averaging over seven targets per game this year and a 20% target share, been over 100 yards last week. Not as cheap as he was, but it's not that far off at 6100 bucks. I think still think he's a great play. And obviously Casey's defense, nothing really to be too scared about, although they have been playing it better as of late. Uh, Mike Williams, it depends here because we're not sure if he's even going to play. He has been testing negative, but I mean, we're probably not going to know until Saturday if he's going to go. But if Keenan Allen's out and Mike Williams plays, obviously got like Mike Williams here would be a great option, but Justin Herbert, and he's just way too cheap. Um, Mary Cooper, we already talked about. Cole Beasley, just a pairing option with Josh Allen or a runback option with the Buck Stacks. And if one of or both of Mike Williams and Keenan Allen happens to be out, Jalen Guyton would be the best value play wide receiver. Got a touchdown last week. Facing the Giants, obviously not a defense you should be scared of. 8th DBA versus the pass this year with 24th versus wide receivers and Guyton. More of a deep threat, but he will take on an expanded role if any of those guys happen to miss, especially both. And I think we forgot to talk about DJ Moore. Uh, look, if you're playing Cam Newton, you don't have to pair anybody with him. I think DJ Moore is a fine one-off at this price point. It feels awful playing any Panthers, especially with Cam Newton under center, but he should still be able to get DJ Moore the ball. And we did see there is upside. They had that like 60-yard catch out of the game with Cam Newton. It's not going to feel good. I felt better with DJ Moore when Sam Darnold was the quarterback, as odd as that sounds, because he, <laughs> he, was, he was very bad after a few games. But he wasn't pretty good at first, and they had that great game versus Dallas. And DJ Moore is picking up some ownership, and if DJ Moore is going to be chalky, which as of right now he is kind of high up there, that feels disgusting, but... 
at 6,200 bucks, he's grading out well and he's popping the optimizer, which is insanely scary. But I definitely think we could play some DJ more at that price versus Atlantic is how bad they've been versus the past this year. They do have a good corner in AJ Terrell, but outside of that, it's definitely a beautiful defense. Uh, moving on to tight ends, it's not a great position this weekend. Last week, we just had Chalk Foster Moreau. He only caught one ball. He was goose egging us for a little bit, but everyone played him, so it didn't really matter. But up top, we have Travis Kelsey, George Kittle, Rob Gronkowski. Kind of just depends on your roster construction once again. I mean, if you're stacking the Chiefs or just stacking this game in general, Travis Kelsey, good option. And he always historically just murders the Raiders. So he's got that one thing going. I don't really play narratives or anything, but whatever it may be, Travis Kelsey kills the Raiders. And I mean, still one of, if not the best tight end in football. I mean, I know he hasn't been as dominant this year or consistent, but the Chiefs offense just hasn't been great in general, but in general, but still like Travis Kelsey here. George Kittle, if Debo Samuel happens to be out, we gotta have some interest. He's not as cheap as he was last week. I put him on the core plays video saying he's one of my favorite tournament plays because everyone's playing Foster Moreau, everyone's playing these other tight ends. Don't forget about George Kittle, and he just had a fantastic game, about 200 yards and I think two touchdowns. Just absolutely killed it. Facing Cincy here, I don't really care about matchups with George Kittle, but if Debo is out, that'll be a big boost for Kittle, so he'll be the number one option. Rob Gronkowski at $6,000. The guy's just been absolutely killing it. I'm not sure we can call him prime Gronk, but he's looking he's looking really good. He's getting wide open. Tom Brady's hitting him. The price has come up at $6,000. I remember a couple weeks ago, and he was like $4,300. Unfortunately, it's no longer the case, but... I just like this game in general, so just as many pass-catching options as I can get. Then take your picks of the cheap options here. We have Gerald Everett, 3500 bucks. Just kind of hope for a touchdown versus Houston, which they have not been good versus tight ends this year. Jared Cook will get a boost if any of the pass catches are out for the Chargers, so he could benefit from that. Keep your eyes and ears peeled for some news there. And James O'Shaughnessy, 2900 bucks. Didn't really do much last week, but he still had six targets. And with no Dan Arnold, he's declared tight end one. And Tennessee's pass defense isn't exactly great. And they'll be trailing in this game, so... I'd expect probably five plus targets once again for James O'Shaughnessy, and at some point numbers are going to pop up. So don't mind him if you're looking for a cheap option. Then moving on to the defenses, as I always say, I try to find the cheapest defense possible to play. For me, two chalky defenses are more than likely going to be the Panthers and the Browns defense. No bias there with the Cleveland shirt, but they do look fine this week. Last time they played Lamar Jackson, they forced four picks, and they have a good defense. I mean, they're all healthy right now. I mean, they have a I know earlier in the season, they got just absolutely boat raced by some teams, but they were dealing with some injuries, but with Miles Garrett and everyone healthy, I mean, hard not to like my 2700 bucks, especially playing a home in a must-win game for the Browns and the Panthers facing the Falcons. is pretty self-explanatory. Seahawks versus Texans. I don't think we have any doubts there. I mean, I know the Seahawks defense isn't great, but the Houston offense is even worse, and they're only 16.5 implied team total against them and a very low total. Saints versus the Jets speaks for itself. Titans versus Jacksonville. And the Broncos versus Detroit at home with the lowest implied team total on the slate against them. So with that being said, that'll probably be it for the video. So I hope it was helpful. And if it was, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet already. If you want to take that one step further, got a fish member over on Patreon. Link is down below in the description for that. Optimizer, ownership projections, cheat sheets, all that fun stuff. Link can be found down below. Not for the NFL, but the NBA, MLB, and NASCAR as well. But don't forget to check out Price Picks promo code CPEN to get a free instant deposit match bonus up to a hundred dollars free money. Why not use it to your advantage? They run a lot of promos too. Like last night, you could make a free bet and get your money back even if it lost. So check it out. Very fun to play over there. But that'll be it. I'll stop rambling, and I'll see you guys tomorrow for the line of building in court plays videos.